Hi, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you today on some quilts that are a little different. Well, a while back, a client asked me some suggestions on what to do with a quilt top that had embroidery on it, and so I thought this video would be good for you out there who are working or for you that want to do a quilt top that has embroidery or a t-shirt quilt and also give you some information on what you could tell the long armor you want to be done on it or also you know what you would like to do on it give you some suggestions so I thought this would be a good suggestion video and kind of share some pictures of some old quilts some quilts that I quilted that had embroidery on them so I really do hope you like this video as you see some of my old work uh, I'll see you in the sharing, in the showing. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, in this clip, I'm gonna post three quilts that I did for clients. Now, I didn't do the quilting and I didn't do the piecing, but what I did do is I did do all the embroidery work. A client came to me and asked me if I would do a circle of life and I did all the embroidery and I also did kind of little squares that she wanted me to embroidery certain dates and times of events in that person's life so that she could kind of do a commemoration and honoring that person. So you're going to see a lot of the embroidery, but what I want you to look at is she went ahead and gave the quilt to her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law did beautiful straight line stitching over the embroidery and it still looks very elegant and beautiful, but she just did very basic quilting. Also too, I've done three quilts. You're going to see a pink one that I did for this client. I didn't build them, okay? So she built them and she deserves all the credit and the work. But I did do the embroidery work. And you can see that just simple straight line stitching over embroidery does not take away from the embroidery and it doesn't hinder it. Now this next quilt I'm going to share with you that I did for a pasture years ago uh, me and a friend pieced it together and I went ahead and I embroidered all the way on the border a scripture that he loved at the moment he was having kidney problems and he was taking uh, going for dialysis and stuff and they were telling me that um, this minister who married me and my husband that he was sick and so I you know it was placed on my heart to make him this beautiful repeating the cross quilt. I do have several tutorials and I'll link the tutorials somewhere up here. I think it's up here on that pattern and how you can do the quilt block to make this quilt top. Here you see that I did a very dense quilting throughout the whole quilt and as I embroidered all the way around the border that I really didn't care if the high dense quilting was over the embroidery and you're going to see a whole bunch of beautiful pictures of this quilt. They, it came out beautiful and I'm going to also share several clips of how beautiful the borders looked when they were quilted. This is a kind of thicker type of embroidery that I did. It didn't hinder it. It didn't uh, the machine didn't drag on it, but it was a little bit more dense because I made sure it was step stitched, not satin stitched, so that the stitch itself wouldn't kind of unravel. Because I knew that he may be taking it to doctor's offices or be in a place where he's sitting on dialysis, and so I wanted to make sure that the quilt itself was able to endure, or the embroidery I placed on it was able to endure, maybe the environment it was going to be brought under I guess. In this video too I'm going to share how I was quilting for one of my clients just recently. She brought me a t-shirt quilt that had embroidery on it. Some areas were high dense embroidery areas and some areas were not as dense. You see a football that I went ahead and I quilted over it. My machine easily was able to run over it without it being caught or dragging because it was a high dense embroidery design but it wasn't so dense that it got caught up on the machine. Now this is where you have problems when you're quilting on embroidery items. One of the designs on my friend's quilt had an incredible hawk and the problem is that was an extremely dense embroidery design. I am sure to get a lot of the texture that was on the incredible hawk um, it created almost like a hump on the embroidery. If you see embroidery that has kind of like, 
you can, it, it rises like a little mound. Do not quilt over it. Well, you can, because I did, I wasn't paying attention because when I looked at the quilt, it looked fine. But then here was this one incredible hawk design that was embroidered. It was so dense that literally my long arm hopped over it and you can see a weird long wonky stitch on it because it kind of got stuck there. Now, I don't recommend that you quilt over a heavily dense embroidery design. This would be the time where you would clip out the design and quilt around it, or if you have a computerized system, or you would quilt around it manually or custom-like, because this can cause a lot of stitch problems. It can get caught on the design and drag the design and warp the quilt and warp the shirt and, and just warp the block itself, and you don't wanna do that. So there are times where you can quilt over an embroidered design and it doesn't cause any problems like that, but there are times where if you see a thick embroidery design and you don't have an industrial long arm quilting machine, you may have some problems where the long arm will get stuck there. But if it's just lettering or if it's just a name or if it's just something so simple, like, you know, yes, it's embroidered, but not thickly embroidered, um, you can go over it or you can make a decision to quilt around the design. It's just up to you, the quilter. And also it's really up to the person who's paying you because they're the ones that are going to be happy with the results if you do a good job. Okay, on this clip, I wanted to share a quilt that I did years ago. It's called a Father of Lights quilt. This quilt, the embroidery in it was with some really expensive embroidery thread. The lettering was with a metallic iridescent thread that I wanted not to in any way change it because I spent so much on the thread itself that I wanted it to be like the focus. So on this quilt, you could see that there is no stitching anywhere on top of the embroidery because I wanted to make sure that the embroidery itself, that thread just, ah, uh, that, that thread just shine. This is the kind of thread that I used, but it was caught, it was a aqua color. And this thread was pretty pricey. I think this was like $20 a spool. It was really expensive and so there was no way that I was going to have any quilting on that embroidery work that I spent tons of time doing because that just like the letter F for the father um, that took probably like an hour just for that letter to be embroidered and also on the side panels you can tell that um, I embroidered the panels with some really expensive thread. I used different types of expensive embroidery thread and there was no way, no way that I was gonna allow any long arm quilting or quilting to just kind of quilt on top of that. And so some quilts, you know, like the one that I did for my pasture, it didn't really matter because um, it was going to be a useful quilt. It was going to be something that was going to be a functioning quilt for him when he went to dialysis. This quilt, the Father of Lights quilt, I wanted it to be a huge, beautiful banner for my ministry, and I wanted it to to stand out. And so I don't wash it. I don't. I have it as a hanging art piece. And I guess when you're doing when you have your work and you bring it to the long arm quilter, you also need to let them know what your intentions are, what your plans are. Is this something very, is it gonna be a show quilt? Is it gonna be just a family thrown around quilt? And I guess when you, the quilter, the long armer knows those decisions or when you decide what you're gonna do with your quilt, then you decide what kind of quilting you wanna invest in the quilt. And so I just wanted to share some pictures of some older quilts that I did and why I made some of the decisions that I made. I really do thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Okay.